Hello and welcome to New Obsidian Duel Academy. I am your host, Lady Sirisa, and class is now in session. Today we are going to be talking about Invoked Dogmatica DPE, which seems to be quite the rage lately. And I decided I had to test it out last Monday? Yeah, Monday, 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 Monday. Uh, for myself, because, you know, spellcasters are involved. I love spellcasters. I have a group... A spot in my heart specifically for spellcaster type decks so it wouldn't be a much of a surprise that I wanted to try this out myself and uh, the rage was is that it's probably the new best deck I don't fully agree with that but I do agree the fact that it is extremely extremely powerful especially against combo decks as it gets its own control variants into there and it's a, it's a combo deck of its own right as well, uh, with Invoked being the main part, Dogmatica coming in second, and also making sure DPE gets in before Dogmatica even starts doing their plays. Uh, so without further ado, I think we should go ahead and get into the deck list. Uh, starting off, we have a, a playset of Nibiru. Now normally I am against playing Nibiru, but in this deck... Or at least main decking Nibiru. But in this deck, you're running Invoked and you're having ways to go into your lights anyways. So this is not much of a brick as most cases it would be for combo variant decks. Plus you're also going up against a lot of new combo decks in today's format that main decking this is no longer a bad idea. But I still stand by my own personal stance of you should only main deck this is if it's not going to cause you to brick and um and uh what was the other thing uh ah anyways you, you should only main deck it if it's not gonna cause you to brick and it goes with your deck that was the second part there we go um next we have one dogmatica floridas the knighted and then one Dogmatica Maximus. Dogmatica Maximus is a very important for your wind up play. Next we also have one Destiny Hero Dasher because we're on quite the dash. Followed with a Destiny Hero Celestial because the Holy Gods of Warriors wish us to have more cards in our hand. A playset of Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous. The very important card for Dogmaticas to be able to make their plays. Followed by the very one only dedicated normal summon in the entire deck, a playset of Alistair the Invoker. Then we also have a playset of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring because we do need to have some more hand trappage. With another playset of Effect Veiler, which can also be swapped out with maybe Droll and Lockbird if you want to, but she's a light so she goes with the invoked area. Uh, two copies. Oh. That will be 19 monsters in total, but into our spells we have 16 spells with a two copies of Nadir Servant since it's been dropped down to two due to the ban list. With a playset of Triple Tactics Talents, I am have a more soft spot for this card over Crossout Designator even though I'm starting to understand that Crossout Designator is now no longer a brick card considering that most decks are now running Nibiru, Ash Blossom, and maybe Effect Valor or even Artifact Lancia or DDEO Crow. So that is becoming more apparent. So you can swap this out with Cross Out Designator if you so choose. I personally am with Triple Tactics Talent. A two copies card of Fusion Destiny, where you can still run this at one and have it with another card, but two is still good because it doesn't do things like Red Eyes Fusion does. One copy is of terraforming because your field spell is important for you to get your Alistair in your hand, making your Alistair becoming like a seven Alistair card. Like you're running seven Alistairs, I mean. Two copies of Invo Invocation. You could run three, but you really don't need to. Two is just fine. If you run one, you're causing yourself to hurt. So two is just fine. Uh, a playset of Prod, Pot of Prosperity. You get to choose which cards in your extra deck gets to go bye-bye, and you can go through your deck. Of course, you cannot draw cards as a result. I personally like the Spellbook Engine better, but 
This allows you to actually get into cards you actually want, rather than having a little bit of luck. And then finally, a playset of Magical Meltdown to complete our spells, making our Alistair the Invoker, instead of running three, a total of seven. I counted that right. Yeah, I counted that right. In our traps, we were running only five traps. We have a playset of infinite impermanence for extra hand trappage. One copy of Dogmatica Punishment. Other people will not run this, but I chose to because, well, why not? And then, of course, one copy of Shadal Shism to be able to get into our Shadal Wenda or Shadal Construct. Into our extra deck, we have two copies of Invoked Makaba, the star of the show. One El Shadal Construct. I do go into this card like maybe once or twice, but not that often. We also have one copy of Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, also known as Destiny Hero DPE. One Titan Niclad the Ash Dragon. One Invoked Agodius because we are dumping fusion monsters and we it would not be that hard for us to get into there. We also have one Invoked Purgatrio. One El Shadal Epicolone. I so hope I pronounced that right. One copy of El Shadal Wenda to slow down your opponent. And then one copy of Elder Antonina Tess for our fusions. That's 10 fusions. We have one Synchro. We have Cyframe Lord Omega for some recycling. Into our links, we have four links. We have Predaplant Verde Anaconda, one Secure Gardener, one Magistus Artemis the Magistus Moon Maiden and one Salomon Great Almirage. I have my personal opinions on Artemis, but you can also swap this out for something else. Uh, into our side deck, it should, it's pretty generic. Uh, we have a play set of Artifact Lancia because we don't want our opponent to be banishing stuff if we get into an opponent that does a lot of banishing. DDD uh, Crow because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drytron still exists. <laughs> um, one copies of uh, one copy of Harpy Thunder Rusher for those back row heavy like Eldritch, and two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. We also don't care if we're discarding cards, so we actually play a playset of Forbidden Droplet. We could also choose to go with Dark Ruler No More if you personally so choose. We also have. Two copies of Ice Dragon's Prison for those decks that uses a lot of the light cards. And then one copy of Red Reboot. There are some other cards you could probably consider going uh, using that can hurt uh, stuff like Adventurer. And that's like, what was it? Token... What was it called? Token something? It was called Token... It was a, it was a token thingy. Uh, it, like oh yeah token collector token collector is something that you could probably cite in if you're having issues against stuff like adventurer uh what it does is if a token is special summoned except during the damage step you can special summon this card from your from the graveyard if it was sent there blah blah blah, blah or from hand so it doesn't really matter as long as it's from hand or graveyard you can run it at one if you wanted to um not always ideal. I don't play against Adventurer a lot, that's why it's not my side deck, but this is an option. But what it also does is that if this card is special summon, destroy as many tokens on the field as possible, and if you do, this card gains X amount of attack, for, or 400 attack for each token, and then neither player can no longer special summon tokens. So that is an option against stuff like Adventurer, or if people bring back Scapegoat stuff, that sort of thing. So, it is something to go in there. I don't go against it a lot, a lot, so I don't have it in my side. Uh, if you are someone that does, this is something you can use. Uh, I think that is it for the deck list. I think we can go ahead and turn around and go into the replays. Alright, so I got three replays for you. M don't mind all the uh, 50 billion other stuff, like uh, the Twins Hurt, maybe. Uh, I... I will, I've um, got a few stuff on here. Some of these are stuff that I've went and used. I've selected three out of all of these. So we don't have to really worry too much. So the first one we're going to go with Dragon Link do too much. And they really do. Dragon Link is a very, very difficult deck to go up against. Uh, in a lot of cases where it also has a lot of choke points. So let's go ahead and see how we basically wreck 
with this deck on their choke points. So they activate Chaos Space, I activate Ash Blossom to stop the Chaos Space. They normal summon Rocket Tracer, get Striker Dragon, I impermanent Striker so they can get in their uh, field spell, and they set one pass, which is not ideal for them. I activate Magical Meltdown, get Alice or the Invoker to get Invocation, then I actually link them off to go into Alamirage and then and secure Gardena. Take it rear of their Star Leech to go into Mechaba with Invocation, get Dogmatica Effect, get Maximus, uh, and then I also get Alcapine's Effect, Titan Clads, bring back my Alistair the Invokers, attack with their monster, get Secure Garden up to the Graveyard. Forget that Secure Garden basically stops damage. I think, no, I still don't have damage. Uh, set you and went to go pass, and then they Twin Twisters. I try to negate their Abyssal Router Dragon. They go into the draw phase, standby phase, and then they ultimately surrender. So, I won that one. Uh, this is the part where Drytron's mean. Uh, Zeke's been playing Drytron for a while now, and I've always, always struggled, but they are um, still formidable. Uh, there are some choke points that I could not get around, unfortunately, and I think this is a deck the turn where I sighted in. Uh, they get into their Link Rebo, they have Alpha, that I... I struggling so hard to follow. I do apologize. Uh, they get into their plays. We're sitting here waiting. I do not activate my infinite and permanent cards because I'm waiting for the appropriate time. The appropriate time never really shows up and I think I eventually just turn around and hit uh, no longer chain and basically want to, to sleep because now you see a bare nest of floor. They're still making plays. They have no cards left in their hand, and yet they're still making plays from their graveyard plays, which is never really ideal for me. Then they set Scythe to get into a Luralisk monster, and they have a DPE on board. They end their turn, and I go ahead and draw my only card, and <laughs> unfortunately it's an invocation. I activate infinite permanence just to see what happens. They go into the Scythe, and I'm over here going, yeah, no. Well, at least I can try to draw two cards. I was trying to get them to activate their cards so that I could turn around and do something else, but like, yeah, now that I'm locked out of the extra deck, I can't go into my own DBE and I ultimately lose. Uh, then, Exosisters goes on to Adventure, KS Absol, first time I ever played this deck against me. Um, never knew how, he, never knew he knew how to play that, but alright. So they're actually going with the Adventure stuff, which, I, as funny as I said, does I don't go up against them that often. This is the one of the few times I actually did and wish I had token stuff. But they played it a little bit weird, and so we just go ahead and went to go negate the Wandering Griffin first. And then they get some Exo Sisters. I go into my Alistair play. They say no, and I'm over here going, but Ma! And still going into the Fusion Destiny, start popping some cards. Uh, well, first, uh, start attacking the area with some monsters. I pop their token because I know how important that token is. And then just sit on a DPE for the turn. Or I say I sit on one, but I forgot that uh, <laughs> it has to be there already. So like they go ahead and turn around, uh, get more tokens and only have one single token. Not much going on for them. They are in a very tight situation and I'm just recycling a DPE. While also being able to go into my Alistair play, I also go into Artemis, because why not? Fusion and a Mecha Bug, get my Alistair back. I have a Dogmatica monster, who's a power I'm not going to get anything from, and they surrender because I have game. Alright, so... This deck... <laughs> I love it. It is strong. It's exciting. And, honestly, I... If it stays, like more on the roguish side i think it's it will be fine but eventually i'm gonna i could see this turning towards more on the meta side of everything because of the meta aspect aspects of it and i do love how strong this deck is me personally i still prefer my win witch invoked artifacts but i wouldn't mind trying to figure out how to do this sort of thing with my win witch invoked artifacts personally um but otherwise this deck was a lot of fun to play. Um, I saw a lot more wins than I did losses. And honestly, I would recommend this to any other player that wants to play some sort of control variant. Um, without further ado, I think that is it for the video. And I will, like always, I will see you in the next one. Class dismissed.